today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 health foods that are always in my fridge and my pantry. Now, most of these foods I pretty much eat every day, and I'm going to tell you why you should tip. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. All right, so with me here today, I have 10 foods that are almost always in my fridge. And like I said at the beginning, I pretty much eat or drink, one of these is a drink, all of these every single day. Number one is eggs. Eggs are super nutritious. The yolks especially are what hold most of the nutrition and the whites are mainly protein, which is still good, still important. They are a complete protein source, meaning they have all the essential amino acids and they also have collagen. Now, you guys who are not new to my channel will know that all my meals are centered around protein. Protein is key. Protein is the most important macronutrient and most people are under consuming protein and don't even realize it. If you find yourself hungry in between meals, that probably means that you didn't have enough protein at your last meal. And eggs are a great way to boost your protein with any meal. Now, when it comes to other nutrients, eggs are one of the best sources of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is really important for the health of our bones. It helps our bodies to absorb calcium. They're also an excellent source of vitamin E. Two eggs gets you to almost 15% of the daily value. On top of that, they are rich in B vitamins, including biotin, and they also contain some vitamin A and some vitamin D. Next up, we have beef. Beef is probably the most nutritious meat you can eat. Well, uh, actually tied with lamb. Again, it is an amazing source of protein. Also a really great source of bioavailable iron. For women especially, it's really important that we get enough iron every day. A lot of young women especially are not getting enough and they're becoming anemic just because red meat has been demonized. Now, my personal experience with this, I was never anemic. I did have low iron at one point and I used to have really heavy and really painful periods when I started eating more red meat, when I got my iron up and also iodine, which we'll talk about in a little bit, my periods became so much lighter. I have next to no cramps and I mostly attribute that to my red meat consumption, my increased iron intake and my increased iodine intake. Compared to other types of meat, beef is one of the best sources of vitamin B12. It is also rich in zinc, niacin, phosphorus, selenium, CLA. <laughs> Honestly, just so nutritious. And the best part about meat is it doesn't come with all the anti-nutrients, which stop us from absorbing these nutrients. Currently, I pretty much get all of my meat from Butcher Crowd, who are the sponsors of today's video. I've been ordering from Butcher Crowd for a bit over a year now and I cannot recommend their products and their services enough. Currently, I am getting the small beef and chicken box and every month I switch up my add-ons. Sometimes I get some wild salmon. Sometimes I add the sausages. Those are really, really good and don't have any fillers. All of Butcher Crowd's products are free range, pasture raised. Their salmon is wild caught and they also offer wild Australian fish. Your delivery comes flash frozen. You just have to put it in your freezer. And what I do is I just take everything out the night before to let it defrost. My steaks though, I usually leave frozen and cook them in my air fryer from frozen. Usually about 12 minutes on the highest setting. This cooks them perfectly. And it's so easy. Your kitchen doesn't get covered in all the splatter from um, your frying pan or whatnot. It sounds like a little bit of a cheap way to cook them, but I promise you it is so delicious. With Butcher Crowd, I can feel confident knowing that I'm getting the best quality meat from ethically raised animals. They offer free shipping Australia wide and all of their packaging is certified carbon neutral and 100% recyclable. 
If you want to try out Butcher Crowd, head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash Butcher Crowd and use code Kate15 to save 15% off your first order. Thank you again to Butcher Crowd for sponsoring this video. Next up, we have bone broth. Bone broth is a liquid that is made from simmering animal bones and especially meaty joints in water. This extracts the nutrients out of the bones and out of the connective tissues. And the broth you are left with is rich in amino acids, in vitamins, and other essential nutrients. It can be made using pretty much bones from any animal, but the most common ones are beef, chicken, and fish. You can drink it on its own or you can also use it in cooking. I love just putting a little bit in the bottom of my slow cooker and cooking something like beef brisket in it. Oh, so delicious. Now you can make it fresh and then just put it in jars and either freeze it or keep it in your fridge. When I don't have it made fresh, I use this bone broth concentrate or they now call it bone broth body glue from Jevity X. And this is pretty much just like a gooey. And with this, you just take a teaspoon and you add it to boiling water and you get a bone broth. It is fantastic. So easy to use in cooking. Like I'll just add a teaspoon of this into pretty much anything like minced beef, ground beef. I'll just put that in when it's cooking and that just helps to enhance the nutritional value. Beef already. <laughs> Beef, as we already talked about, is super nutritious, but this just gives it a little bit more. It is also rich in electrolytes, which can sometimes be difficult to get on low carb diets, which I know a lot of people who watch me follow. Magnesium, especially, that can be a bit difficult to get just because our modern food is depleted in it, but bone broth is rich in it. It's also really good for your digestion. Some of the amino acids in it can help to heal your intestinal wall if it has become damaged. And bone broth is the best way to break a fast. Next up, we have avocados. These are definitely a low carb favorite. And besides being super delicious, they are also nutritious as well. They're one of the best fruits you can eat in my opinion. And yes, avocados are a fruit. They're high in fat, they're low in sugar, they're high in potassium, they actually have more gram for gram than a banana does, and the added benefit of not coming with all that sugar. Potassium is really important for heart health, and again, this is an electrolyte that can sometimes be difficult to get if you're eating a low carb diet. I know some people experience heart palpitations when they first switch to low carb, and this can be due to low potassium. So adding some avocado in is a good way to increase that and to get the heart palpitations to go away. Keep your heart healthy. And then we have butter. And this is another food that I'm confidently gonna say that I have every single day. <laughs> If you are watching this and you are in complete shock that I am referring to butter as a health food, please hear me out. Saturated fat has been wrongly demonized. The studies that have found a connection between high saturated fat intake and heart disease, for example, they're all based on correlations and not causations. And what I mean by that is these studies have looked at big groups of people and they've seen what they eat and what diseases they have. And people who tend to eat a lot of saturated fat also have a lot of heart disease. But the problem here is that these studies can't take into context all the other things these people are consuming. Usually they're consuming saturated fat in the form of fast food. They're consuming a burger with a white bun with a side of french fries that are fried in vegetable oil and then a coke filled with sugar and the saturated fat is getting the blame. So there haven't been any studies that have been able to prove that saturated fat causes heart disease. And saturated fat is actually the best type of fat that we can consume. Especially when it comes to cooking, any fats that are solid or room temperature, they're more stable, they're less likely to go rancid, to oxidize, and then cause oxidative stress within the body. Anything that is liquid is a lot more fragile. You want to stay away from any vegetable oils, and under the category of vegetable oils, that includes canola oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, corn oil. These are all considered to be vegetable oils. Don't cook with them. Those are actually <laughs> what is causing heart disease or part of the problem. Anyways, back to butter. Butter is rich in vitamin K2, just like egg yolks. It's also rich in CLA. 
Now, you guys who are not new to my channel, you will know that I'm a big fan of Bulletproof Coffees, which is a type of coffee where you add fat to it. So you put in some butter, some MCT oil. That's usually the basic recipe. I used to have these every single day. I've kind of been off them recently and just been having black coffee, but I'm sure I'll get back on the bandwagon soon. Basically, Bulletproof Coffee is a way to extend your fasting window when you consume only fat, your insulin stays low, your blood sugar stays stable. And these are some of the benefits that come along with fasting. But by having this drink, it makes fasting a little bit easier. And I also love cooking eggs in butter. <laughs> Scrambled eggs especially, so, so good. Next up, we have mushrooms. And a fun fact about mushrooms is they're not actually a vegetable. So what are they, you might be asking. They're actually considered to be a fungi. Mushrooms are rich in potassium, they're rich in selenium, and if they're grown outside, if you can find ones that are grown outside, they will also contain some vitamin D too. Mushrooms are also delicious, fried in butter. Oh, so, so good. <laughs> and then we have sauerkraut, which is fermented cabbage. Fermented foods such as sauerkraut include probiotics, which help to replenish good gut bacteria. Now, you guys will know that I had a jaw surgery uh, just over two months ago now. And after I had that surgery, I had to take antibiotics. Now, antibiotics, obviously, they're important in certain situations. But one downside to them is they completely wipe out your gut bacteria, both the good and the bad. So especially after taking antibiotics, it's really important to consume a lot of probiotics. So I've been eating a lot of sauerkraut, eating a lot of yogurt and things like that. And then we have beef liver capsules. Let me know down below if you guys were expecting beef liver or beef liver capsules to make this list or if this one has totally shocked you. Beef liver is one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet, if not the most. And look, in the past, I have tried to cook beef liver and make it palatable to actually enjoy it. And I just cannot do it. And I know, I know people are gonna call me out and just say I'm not doing it right. But honestly, I would just rather take the capsules, get the benefits and not go through all the torture. <laughs> Because in one 85 gram or three ounce serve of liver, you have a whopping 13,000 micrograms of vitamin A, 55 micrograms of vitamin B12, 64 micrograms of vitamin K2, 50% of your daily requirement for iron, 215% of your daily requirement for copper, 50% of your daily value for zinc, and B vitamins across the board. It has so, so many packed into it. Honestly, just so nutritious. A serve of beef liver capsules is six of them. They're pretty big capsules, and I know this shocks a lot of people, but they're pretty big capsules, so it seems like a big serve, but you have to remember that this is a whole food that has been dehydrated into a supplement. It's not just isolated nutrients. So that's why the serving size is six and this is equal to a small serve of liver. Now these ones from Grassland Nutrition, they actually include kelp, which is the richest source of iodine. And I mentioned iodine earlier in the video. Iodine is so, so important. And again, it's a nutrient that a lot of us are not getting enough of, especially women. Like I was saying before, I found iodine made such a difference to my heavy and painful periods. So highly recommend this for everyone, but especially for women and especially if you have painful periods. I guess I should mention that I will link these products exactly or ones that are similar to them in the description box down below. I do have a promo code for these capsules, so I'll put that down there. But moving on to our second to last food, we have fatty fish and specifically fatty fish that has been tinned. So cold water, oily, fatty fish are super, super rich in bioavailable omega-3. And I'm sure we've all heard the benefits of omega-3 for our brain health, for our joints, for our blood. Omega-3 is super important. And instead of spending money on expensive fish oil supplements that are usually rancid, you can just buy tinned fish instead. So I usually buy mackerel. This is my favorite out of all of the cold water oily fish. 
Other options include sardines, anchovy, herring, salmon, and mackerel, that's the fifth one. <laughs> of course I like salmon too, but I like fresh salmon as opposed to tinned salmon. And when you're buying tinned fish, make sure you're buying it either in spring water, that is the ideal, or else olive oil, don't buy it in sunflower oil, soybean oil, any of those toxic vegetable oils that we spoke about earlier. And if you've only ever had sardines and you're thinking about having tinned fish right now and cringing, try mackerel. I swear this is so, so good. And I will just mention that the type of omega-3 that is in fish and in seafood it's different than the type of omega-3 that you'll find in like chia seeds and hemp seeds. The type in seeds needs to be converted to the final form in order for our bodies to use it. If it's not converted, it is just treated like any other type of fat and used for energy. But the type that is in fish and seafood is already converted. So our body can use it for all of the benefits that we hear about omega-3s for our brain and whatnot. And the final food that is always in my fridge or my pantry in this case is apple cider vinegar. If you guys have watched any of my videos on blood sugar, on insulin resistance, you will know why I swear by it. <laughs> Consuming apple cider vinegar before a meal significantly lowers the blood sugar and insulin response. And this is really important for anyone with insulin resistance or blood sugar issues or type two diabetes, PCOS. But even if you don't have these conditions, it's really good for preventing them. Apple cider vinegar has this effect because any vinegar is going to speed up the rate at which your muscle cells can absorb glucose. So it takes it out of your bloodstream faster and that's what makes the blood sugar response lower and that's why less insulin is required. There are a few different ways to use it. Some people take it every morning. Some people take it before bed. I've seen studies where diabetics have taken it before bed and it lowered their fasting blood sugar in the morning. The way I like to use it is taking it before meals, especially meals that are a bit higher in carbohydrates. Again, this just helps to keep blood sugar and insulin more stable. You can take one tablespoon and dilute it in water. That's usually how I take it. That's the easiest way to take it. You can also incorporate it into your cooking, make it into a salad dressing, things like that. I have another video that I shared a couple weeks ago on things you can do to lower the blood sugar and insulin response to carbohydrates. This is one of the tips, but I will link that video up above and you can check it out afterwards if you wanna know the other tips and want to know more about apple cider vinegar. But anyways, guys, those are the 10 foods that I always have in my fridge or my pantry. Like I said, I pretty much eat all of these foods every day. My breakfast this morning was an omelet cooked in butter with some mushrooms and some mackerel, and I had some Parmesan cheese in it as well. I'll probably have something later in the day, like maybe I'm gonna have this steak. I don't actually know what I'm having for dinner tonight. Maybe I'll have this steak. I haven't planned yet. But that, I'll maybe make a little side salad with some avocado, maybe top that with some apple cider vinegar. <laughs> and I think pretty much the only things that I won't be having today, which I could potentially have, I could add the sauerkraut to the salad and have a cup of bone broth and then take the supplement and literally I am eating everything here. <laughs> But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below how many of these foods you currently have in your fridge or your pantry. If you're in Australia, make sure to check out Butcher Crowd. I cannot recommend their products and their services enough. Their customer service, first off, is just absolutely amazing, which just makes me love them even more. I will put the link to check them out in the description box down below and don't forget to use code Kate15. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video where I give you an insulin resistance shopping list, which you can check out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.